Uh, we're going to have to get a knife on that. I believe we can get this one going. What we got here on the workbench today is one of them there hanging uh, two-cylinder Maytag engines. And this is the way it was done already brought here to me. It's just a typical old two-cylinder hanging Maytag. The top bracket is missing. I think we got one over there on the shelf. There it is. 101407. One. That's a serial number. Maytag two-cylinder does have to pull it a washer, but it's a it something ain't right because they should be a little bit of that crankshaft sticking out there. And when I seen that, I looked right down in yonder, in the back yonder, and that backing plate. You can see that shiny place yonder where I put a rag down in there and wiped it crossways. That's supposed to be up flush. So that's about going on an eighth of an inch that that thing is out of alignment. I'm anticipating some problems now. Uh, that's just too much of a gap there. But anyway, it's a pretty decent. Uh, uh, cranks over pretty good. You know, they got it didn't. I didn't get no pit, no. I didn't get no spark plugs with it. But it, this one does have those nice boots on yonder, and the and the wires are pretty good. It's got a nice cap on it yonder. But it does. It is pretty free. It does have some compression there. But it don't have any spark. It just has no spark whatsoever. It seems to be a pretty decent shape. It's pretty tight and everything. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's. Uh, I mean, it's a late model. I'm gonna take this flywheel off and we'll see what's in there. And I'm gonna get that muffler off again or two. Uh oh. Uh oh. I felt that. I felt the flywheel loose there just when I loosened up that nut. You should have to knock that thing off there with it. Yeah, it's loose. I know it was gonna be because I could feel it. Well, on first examination, it's pretty clean. It's got a lot of oil in there, which looks like it's fresh oil, uh, but it looks really clean in there. Let's see. It's got enough magnet in there to run it, so we won't have no problem with that flywheel. It don't look like it's damaged or nothing. The problem, uh-oh. Now the problem, you see what I was talking about where this, and it, where it's been a rubbing right here? This backing plate has shifted and it's been rubbing down yonder too on the on the magnet right there. Right there's a shiny place on that magnet. What's happened is this was loose and it shifted outward and it's rubbed. I hope it ain't got down to the windings yet. And somebody has put one of them. And I don't like that right there. These uh, it's a. Uh, it's a well you see that big old thing right there that's just not good I'm gonna open this up and tell you something see that big old bolt yonder but this is just not good don't be doing that that's just not good I, I, I will check this condenser uh, the points uh, the points really looks uh, well they're frosted up a little bit as would be expected if it ain't been running but I'm gonna show you something the cinch the cinch bolt back in the back yonder now, I, all I did is loosen it, and I'm going to show you something. You see that? It went back, I'm going to say a good eighth of an inch. It's loose. Uh, that's unusual, but it's clean. It's really clean in there. But you can see right, Gunner, see where that's worn away? And the, oh, I, I don't see no, I don't see no copper in Gunner, but it's worn pretty bad. Uh, that's going to be iffy. I'll disassemble this and then put her back together. That's really clean right there. No problem. The All of the parts are there. It's loose. That's surprising. The arrow is going in the red. You, you, when you put these back together, there is some part numbers and there's an arrow direction marker on this face of this ignition cam and it has to face outward. Uh, this engine, uh, it appears to be in good shape. It appears like it's not been disassembled, but somebody has taken these out and removed the bracket that would have been on top of this engine. Well, yes, I did have one of those top plates out you under in the parts bin and it goes right up on the other. And I'm going to be kind of easy with this. If this was, if I owned this engine, 
uh, I would definitely not paint it. It's in pretty good, it's in pretty decent condition. Sometimes you get one that should not be painted, and this is one of them. Uh, the, 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 the paint is burnt away from the cylinders, which is which is normal. But this fits right up on here is where this is going to go. The, the hanging bracket just fits right there where those top cylinder bolts was at. You just put it right on there and put the bolts right back in there. Okay, you see I brought the big wrench out to kind of, well, let's say torque them down, but not too much. You'll develop a feel with your tools and how much to tighten them. We got the plate on there, and, and, and some uh, a couple of years ago, I was out there trading on some stuff. This bracket here was with it, and it's 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 a good proportion bracket. It's made out of uh, well, it's like a half inch by three three quarter flat bar, just kind of welded up there together. It, you you hang your may tag up with. It. You see what we got there? And this, this, with this bracket here, that's a two by four, and it just barely clears. So that's how much clearance you have off of the ground, which is, that's pretty good. Whoever, I didn't build this. To check the condenser, this is a standalone, it's a capacitance meter. You set it on whatever microfad that you do not want to exceed. So we're gonna get that condenser off, Your Honor. You can check capacitors with a true RMS meter. Uh, they work really good. This just happens to be a standalone meter. Uh, I thought it was important enough for me to know if they're good or bad to warrant me buying this. And if you can see, I have a .24 micro fad. This is a good condenser. There's a, nothing wrong with it. I will probably put it back into service. I did look this, I did look this engine up uh, in the book over there. It come out to be a 1946 made in the month of October. Now I did take it out on the work out outside the door there. Put it down with some uh, PB blaster, let it sit there for a few minutes and blow it off with the high pressure air hose. Also while I had it outside I turned it up on the end, squirted a good amount of 30 weight non-detergent oil into this piston hole here while it was in an upright position. Turned the engine over so that it would be well lubed it, and it does, I took, did take a flashlight and look in yonder. It looks pretty clean inside the cylinder. The best I can see, good threads in the spark plug. So they may have been removed recently. That being the case, all may be weld. I'm going to remove this points, clean them up, put them back on, unaffix these spark plug leads, clean them up, put them back on there. We'll reassemble it and see do we got spark. The points are set about 12 thousandths should be 20. At 20, I could not get a spark. I cleaned the terminals, put those back on there. The problem with this engine is going to be that the bushing is wore out. You can actually move this crankshaft enough to where that you can make the points go close about, I'm going to say, five thousandths. That's how much that's how much play is in that crankshaft. Uh, this is not my engine. If it was my engine, uh, I would have done already had it took a pump. It's definitely got the bushing wore out of it enough to where that it actually, you can feel it on the other side of the engine, at least five or ten thousandths. But anyways, I'm going to bolt it all up and uh, just give it a try, and then it will be up to the owner. Another thing about this engine is the, if you look down in yonder, it appears that this flywheel may have been loose at some point in time and it has wallowed that taper out. So it don't want to tighten up. The, the engine uh, appearance, you would think it was really a good engine and it is a late model, a 1946, but you can see that it does have its problems. That, it's hard to fix that. This is a DA. It's one of the better ignition systems.
Okay, I brought this engine out here in the yard, put a muffler on it up yonder. When I kicked her over there, it started. So I did have to shut it down, go in there and get the camera, and we'll see if it'll start again. Now this little engine right here is a perfect example of an engine being wore out, used up. It's a late model. Uh, don't it's uh, the engine has not been abused uh, appearance, but it sucks air beside of the crankshaft where the worn bushing is at. So you have to give it a little bit more gas on the fuel cap. You don't open this as much because it's a getting air but beside of the crankshaft uh, it's uh it's a perfect example of a, of these old maytags being wore half out and still run pretty decent we'll see if it'll start again uh you stop them you stop these two cylinders by opening this air valve open you don't close it you open it and they'll quit running uh, about a quarter of a turn and after you get it running and, and you can adjust it with this nut down on the bottom there and this air tube here but you start it somewhere like about a quarter of a turn we'll see if she'll go again <laughs> 